Hey, this is Patrick with TakeTheTruck.com. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the ARB Elements fridge that we use in our truck camping setup. We've used this thing now for about a year and a half and really put it through its paces. Uh, I think we've got about 12,000 miles of overland travel with this thing mounted on the outside of our vehicle exposed to the weather. Um, we've taken it through hundreds of miles of dusty dirt roads out in Moab, Utah area. Uh, used it in freezing cold temperatures up in the alpine areas around Telluride, Colorado. Uh, jostled it around like crazy on the rocky trails up in Drummond Island in the UP of Michigan. And I think we've even submerged it a few times uh, here in the Ozarks doing water crossings. Um, and the thing just keeps on going. So anyways, wanted to talk about the, the features, uh, what we like about it, as well as some of the caveats. So. Uh, we do have a new post up on our site with a lot more detail. You can check that out. I'll drop the link below the video. But I'll turn the camera around and walk you through it. All right, so this is the ARB Elements fridge. Um, right off the bat, you can see this nice stainless steel exterior. That was one of the things we really liked about it. Uh, it just makes it seem more rugged than uh, the other plastic type models that ARB makes or other manufacturers make. Um, Around the back here is the, uh, the power plug-in, so uh, you can operate it on 110 volt or, uh, or two, 220, I guess, if you're outside the U.S. Um, AC and then uh, 12 volt or 24 volt DC. Um, and you can have it plugged into both simultaneously. It, it automatically um, kind of prioritizes the, the 110 volt power and then when you unplug that, it'll start drawing 12 volt power uh, if you have them both plugged in. Uh, we've got ours hooked up to our Energy Kodiak solar generator uh, running 12 volt power uh, as well as our, our 110 volt from our house, but um, you can run it off your vehicle's 12 volt power as well. Uh, the nice thing about these is they have three phase battery protection, so if you're running it off your car starting battery, uh, it, it does have a, a mechanism where it will shut itself off if it recognizes that the, the voltage coming in is, is getting too low to where it might jeopardize your ability to start your vehicle. Um, and you can kind of fine tune that in the menu, menu settings, I'll show you that. Um, this is a uh, add-on uh, sold separately. Unfortunately, this fridge does not have built-in um, uh, wireless monitoring, so you got to add this on. I think it was like 60 bucks or something. Not a big deal, but we did use it. Uh, we did end up opting to get it because we have it mounted on the exterior of our vehicle and just wanted to be able to monitor and make sure that it was staying cool while we were traveling. Um, although we've never had an issue with it not, so maybe didn't need to make that purchase. But the um, fridge is secured with these tie downs. These are also sold separately, unfortunately. Um, and then uh, it's, that's how we secure it to this bracket. Uh, the latches are easy to operate one-handed. Another thing we really like about this fridge is this uh, gas strut is infinitely adjustable, so anywhere from zero to 90 degrees, uh, wherever you put it, it'll stay, which is really handy when you're cooking to just be able to open the fridge, grab what you need, and close it, not worry about it slamming shut on your hand or something. Um, another great feature is it's got two types of locking mechanisms. Um, so this right here you can see that's the the electronic lock um, and you use this this keypad combination that you can preset uh, to unlock it but it'll, it will lock the lid shut I guess to prevent teenagers or, or uh, random campers from coming in and grabbing your food. I don't know. We've never really used that personally. We do end up using this one over here. This is a, a padlock loop, uh, which is really nice um, to secure it to the uh, both the carrier and the, the truck's bumper uh, if we're like out going for a hike or something so nobody walks off with the fridge. But um, that's the interior space. Kind of hard to get a read on how much space there really is in there. 
I'll try to include some stills of uh, kind of what we're packing up uh, for our uh, three-day camping trip we're taking here in, in a few hours. But um, down below, you can see there's a drain plug in the bottom. Uh, th probably the, the best feature of this fridge is the fact that it is weatherproof. Uh, ARB designed it to be exposed to the elements uh, up to 365 days a year. So um, with that said, you can you can actually just hose this thing out. We, we uh, anytime we get back from camping or if something busts when we're on the road and makes a mess in there, we just take everything out and hose it out, pop the drain plug and go about our day. Um, this is the menu here. Actually, I'm it on yet. I think I've got it set pretty high because it's empty right now but um, here's your temperature adjustment controls uh, power on and off and then the menu features so it's reading 41 degrees it's pretty chilly this morning I've got it set at 46 so that's the set temperature um, you can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, this is for the three-phase battery protection to set it. Uh, you can set it low, medium, or high, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. And then uh, that's for the uh, wireless monitor to choose the channel, and then you can dim the display. And then that operates the, uh, the electronic lock. Uh, as far as power usage goes, I know a lot of people are curious about that. Um, we've averaged about uh, 0.89 amps per hour with this fridge. Uh, works out to about 260 watts of power usage a day in a 24-hour period, um, which is really s f pretty efficient. Um, the the most uh, power it's going to use is, of course, when it's hotter outside. It really, it really varies dependent on the ambient temperature. So, um, you know, if it's 90 degrees outside, of course, it's going to run more. But the nice thing about these compressor-based fridges is that they don't—they only run to get the fridge down to temperature, and then they shut off, and then they kick back on if the fridge gets warm enough. They're not like the thermoelectric, the cheap, cheap ones that you can buy. They—they uh, they run continuously. Uh, and use a lot more power so uh, I think that's pretty much it um, I'm sure I've forgotten something but if I did uh, you can you can check out that blog post uh, in the link I'll drop below the video and uh, I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like loaded up and what all we fit in there and if you have any questions uh, drop it in a comment down below thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time